welcome to the Ghosts of Harrenhal. My name's Simon. And I'm Kelly. Thank you for joining us for episode 12 of our chapter-by-chapter chapter book review of the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George Martin. Today we're discussing chapter 11 of A Game of Thrones, Daenerys 2. And as always, our plan is to chat about the chapter without spoiling anything that is still to come in what we hope will be an entertaining half hour. I have no doubt. We'll summarize what happened, discuss our thoughts on it, provide some useful background, compare it to the TV show, indulge in a little pedantry, and cover some reader mail. Be sure to check out our show notes. They provide some additional information about the characters and other things of note in this chapter. And, hey, if you like what we're doing, um, please support the show by going out and leaving a review on iTunes or at podchaser.com. That would really help get the word out and really help make our day everything all right uh yeah uh we have a special for, guest we do have a special guest uh my dog <laughs> <laughs> my dog penny has joined us because she was scratching at the door and uh we just felt bad so we let her in may get some unusual sound effects on this one that's not simon that's <laughs> <Penny>. <laughs> so um I've been baking bread. I know you know this because I've been showing you photographs of the bread, which is rather cruel because the bread is delicious. And uh, and I've been showing it off to everyone. I've been showing it you know, just wherever I go. I'm showing pe- people pictures of the bread I've been baking. It looks I, very pretty. Thank you. Be- it looks very... Maybe we could put this on the Twitter. Yeah, verse. yeah certainly. Yeah. I showed it to my brother. I showed a picture to my brother, and he said, congratulations on achieving something that everybody in the world could do in the Middle Ages without <laughs> electricity. So... <laughs> Uh, and just as we started recording this, I got a text from him saying, top tip, more McKelly, less you. Uh, well, <laughs> it's so funny. I'm sure he's in the minority there. <laughs> All right. Let's get down to business with a quick recap of what Daenerys was doing last time we saw her. Previously, Danny was being paraded by her brother Viserys in front of her prospective husband, Khal Drogo, warlord leader of the Dothraki tribe. Khal Drogo wants a wife and Viserys wants an army that can win back the Iron Throne. Danny was getting cold feet, uh, but Viserys was all too willing to make the alternatives even worse for her. Yep. McKelly, why don't you give us the summary? So Daenerys and Khal Drogo are set to be wed under the open sky in a field outside of Pentos. The arrival of Drogo's Kalasar, consisting of 40,000 Dothraki warriors and innumerable women, children, and slaves, has the Pentashi magisters anxious. They've doubled the size of the city guard. Meanwhile, Sir Jorah Mormont has sworn his sword to Viserys, and so has joined their little group. Viserys is annoyed that the call has given him no time frame for when he will get his promised warriors that he needs to retake the Iron Throne. Magister Illyrio indicates that it could be months or even years, uh, and Sir Jorah suggests Viserys not mention his frustrations to the call, as he probably won't take it well. In turn, Viserys does not take that counsel very well. Mm-hmm. He threatens him with mm-hmm. the bodily harm mm-hmm. for such a statement. During the wedding ceremony, which lasts from dusk until dawn, Danny is as terrified as she has ever been. She is frightened by the barbaric Dothraki customs and by the hulking called Drogo sitting next to her. During the ceremony, Danny sees many strange and brutal customs that disturb her. And by the end of the ceremony, 12 Dothraki men have died. Near the end of the ceremony, Danny is presented with many interesting gifts, including three beautiful dragon eggs from Illyrio. The cow presents her with a magnificent silver horse, and as the couple prepares to ride off, the series digs his fingers into Danny's leg and threatens that if she does not please the cow, she will wake the dragon like she has never seen before. When they finally get to an isolated spot to consummate the marriage, Danny is surprised to discover Drogo is tender and caring with her. Yep. Uh, we thought Ro- King Robert's procession to Winterfell was a big party, but this... Yeah, and like, this is uh, a lot of people to uh, accommodate. 80,000 people, kind of? If you yeah, I, I guess if you... Yeah, 40,000 warriors yeah. and figure equally as many women, children, and slaves. But the Pentashi, not exactly trusting of this <laughs> Dothraki group within the sight of their walls. <laughs> Earlier, we remember that uh, Illyrio Mopatis was saying that they bribe the Dothraki to not come in there and right. kill them all. But uh, <laughs> there's only so far a bribe will go. <laughs> right. There's 40,000 on the doorstep. It looks a bit terrifying. Yeah. You know, I did a, a little bit of research, and uh, it's with good reason that they are nervous because um, when the Dothraki rode out of the West hundreds of years ago, they sacked and burned every town along the way, uh, from small folks' hovels to nobles' estates and entire kingdoms are now gone 
So, you know, once bitten, twice shy, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, So Viserys is not in, is impatient as you'd expect him to be. He wants the warriors as soon as possible. He's he's hoping he'll get the call. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> that was an attempt at a joke. <laughs> Attempted jokes are just as funny as ones yeah, that yeah. land sometimes. Yeah, I mean, that's right. I mean, either it's funny or it's funny that I tried and failed. <laughs> right. you know, either way, I win. Uh, Mormont had better be a little bit careful. If yeah. if you say things, including the words lesser men, in front of Viserys, and you don't make it perfectly clear that you weren't talking about Viserys, <laughs> <laughs> you could be in trouble. Yeah, he's going to uh, gonna wake the dragon if he's not careful. Yeah. Mopadis explains that Drogo has to take Danny to the city of Vaes, Vaes Dothrak, presenting her to the Dosh Kaleen. Yep. Um, we'll explain what that is later. The, their marriage won't be official until that's happened. Right, the, the Dosh Kaleen have to approve her, right. basically. Um, it's a long trip from Pentos to Vice Dothrak, so um, Viserys had better learn some patience. And it's the wrong way. Right, it is. <laughs> it's a long it's way, a way the wrong from direction. Us, yeah. But even once their marriage has been approved by the Dosh Kaleen, then Mopatas mentions that they have to wait for the omens to favor war, the Dothraki or we'll wait for the right omens. That I I also go by the Dothraki rule of waiting for the omens to favor me going to war. <laughs> and so far in forty nine years of life, not once. No, no, no one omen has fallen that direction. Exactly. So the, it, I'm taking as the big omen me wanting to do it, and that's right. never happened, not <laughs> once. So. so it will be interesting uh, to watch the series uh, try and hold his tongue through all this. Yeah. And uh, it'd be, be even more interesting to see if uh, Khal Drogo wakes the dragon, how that works out. Yeah. Viserys, Viserys is a big bully, but he's not a very big person, <laughs> right. I don't think. Whereas Khal Drogo looks like a bit of a menace. Yeah. He's played in the show by uh, Jason Momoa, yeah. who's just an unbelievable specimen of a yes, man. He's, he's ridiculous. Yeah. It's uh, funny because... I think we've talked about this, you know, over the years that he's got this Dothraki, he's this, you know, quiet, hulking Dothraki with this, you know, he speaks obviously in a Dothraki tongue. And then you hear an interview with him and he's like a California dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> it, it is. It is enormously disappointing. I mean, he really should. If I were him, given the impression that he makes as Khal Drogo versus the impression he makes as Jason Momoa, I would simply speak Dothraki right, to everyone. Right, just stick with it. Yeah. yeah, it's working for you. Yeah, I mean... You might argue it'll be difficult to get what you want. I don't think so. <laughs> Pointing <laughs> yeah. at his general size and demeanor should get him pretty much anything he needs. One line I found interesting was that there was a reference to the Dothraki putting on rich fabrics and sweet perfumes when visiting free cities, which I can't picture that. Yeah. Based on what we saw during this ceremony, which is pretty much all we know so far about them, there wasn't a lot of showering. No, <laughs> not a lot of fancy perfumes or rich fabrics, that's for sure. So I guess that's some differences with the TV show. Yeah, perhaps, I don't yeah. remember if we ever saw them dressed yeah. fancy style. I don't think so. Just going back to an earlier thought, if Jason Momoa is listening, I disagree with what McKelly and I <laughs> said earlier. <laughs> you are super cool as you are. So we get an idea of how barbaric the Dothraki might be. Uh, rape and murder are not just ignored, but positively celebrated. Yeah. Uh, Mapadis tells Danny that weddings without with less than three deaths are considered dull affairs. And since a dozen died in this one, it uh, uh, must be quite the rock star start that they're getting here. It as helps a to invite 80,000 guests. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much, if I had a wedding with 80,000 guests, I'd expect at least one of them to die. <laughs> There's no privacy in a Kalasar. They, they mate like herd animals, apparently. So there's no concept of sin or shame, like in a right. civilized society. Right, right, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, she's now married into this. So she apparently forgot the rule of thumb that uh, you marry the family. You marry the, as tri well as you the, marry the tribe. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. she didn't really have a choice in this situation, but she may wanted to look a little closer into the family before she <laughs> said, I do. Oh, the dog is gone, by the way. Yeah. Uh, not gone. The, <laughs> my wife came home and I gave the dog to her to take care of. So you shouldn't hear any more crying or, well, I well, can't guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be the dog. <laughs> if you hear crying, it won't be the dog. So uh, Danny got a bunch of gifts. She did. And Viserys gave Danny three handmaidens, which, of course, he doesn't have anything, so they were given to him by Larry Yeah. 
Um, the three handmaidens are called Iri, Jiqui, and Dorea. Yeah. They are charged with teaching her to ride, speak Dothraki, and the arts of love, right. respectively. Yeah. And Jorah Mormont gave her uh, books of histories and songs of the Seven Kingdoms, which, since she's never lived in Westeros, that's a pretty cool gift. Yeah. You know? And maybe she'll understand a bit more about the kingdom series is so obsessed with and why she has to go through all she's going through to help him get it back. She was very touched by that gift in yeah, particular, it yeah. seemed. Um, she's taken with the beauty of the three dragon eggs. Those were the those were the big ones. That, yeah. that was her yeah. most important present. Yeah. They're petrified, but they've kept their original colours. Yeah. And assuming they're not just some kind of fake, they uh, appear to stir something in her Targaryen soul. Right. She is from a dragon riding family. That's so. right, absolutely. Yeah. So um blood riders, they gave her traditional weapon gifts a whip an arak and a bow made of dragon bone the arak being a curved sword yes right um, and of course they're not actually for her no she <laughs> she's specifically instructed to refuse these gifts and offer them to her husband we'll talk a little bit more about blood riders in the background information section one particularly interesting gift was the gown made of 1000 mouse skins yes <laughs> must be delightful yeah uh, yeah must have been quite the tedious job putting yeah. all that together. Especially getting them out of the traps and things. <laughs> <laughs> Setting all the traps. Yeah. <laughs> so Cal Drogo gave her the silver filly, which is the pride of the Kalasar. Yes. The silver matches the silver in her hair, he said. And very good. Definitely brightened her mood. It did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Momentary joy and confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it said might have been the first time ever that she felt joy or... Interesting. Laughed or something like mm. that. So um, when she comes to a halt after riding the, the horse, she uh, asks Mopatis to tell Khal Drogo, he has given me the wind. Right, yeah. That may have been the lamprey pie. <laughs> 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 oh, cheap gags. Yeah, we make yeah. ourselves laugh. Yeah. That's what's important. And then the series. He has to ruin everything. <laughs> Does he ever not ruin everything? <laughs> He's just, he's so single-minded and obsessed. Can he not, he's at a wedding. He's at his younger sister's wedding. Can he not lighten up for just a second? You know? The booze is flowing. <laughs> right. <laughs> lighten up, man. Has, I, I, I'm serious when I wonder this. Has he no love or concern for her well-being whatsoever? I mean, they grew up just the two of them. You would think that would create some sort of strong bond between the two of them. Yeah. But we talked about this in the previous uh, Danny chapter that he just wants the throne. That's all he cares about. And Apparently. Yeah. He's an oddly shallow character in among such deep, yeah. complicated characters. Yeah, but I mean, again, he's not a POV character. So it's, True. it's, it's, it's always hard. I mean, you could, you could level the same thing against Sansa and Rob, you know, that they, we don't really know what they're like because we don't get their POV. That's, that's true. That's a good point. He just is such a downer. He is, one. yeah. So it is a hopeful sign that Khal Drogo's tender with Danny. Uh, maybe yeah. it's not going to be the enduring misery we feared it would be. Yeah. I was as surprised as she was to learn that he wasn't going to treat her like the men did during the ceremony. Right, yeah. Not the men treated her during the ceremony. Uh, treated other women, yes. yeah, yeah. We are, of course, still turning a blind eye. I mean, when, when, we, when we say that this is not horrific, we're turning a blind eye to the fact that she's a 13-year-old girl and he's a grown man and there's a horrible imbalance of both physicality and power between the two of them very true yeah and then that makes just maybe sort of think about why martin made her 13 i mean some of it is the timeline that he chose she has to be 13 because that's when all of this happened sure um and certainly you can imagine that in sort of barbaric times 13 year olds would get married off but it feels like if you're a writer you've got a choice you could you could either age her or if you really can't because of your timeline you could at least not pretend that this is a romantic thing. I mean, because it, right. it really isn't. I mean, this right. is this is a a very big man raping a child. You know? Yeah, that's that's good point. Very yeah, true. and then if you do that, if you if you if you confront that and and you think about it and you analyze it and 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 you sort of like look at the damage that it's going to cause her psychologically, you've got an interesting strand to the book. Right. You know, if you just write it as you know a romance scene, you're. Uh, you're missing out on something, and you're a bit twisted as well, I would say. <laughs> yeah, all good points. Danny and Drogo have no common language right now. It's so tricky. 
might make things tough. Jiqui had better work quick. Yep. Jiqui is the handmaid whose job Charged is to with language. Teaching the language. Right. Well done. Well done. <laughs> and so Drogo's braid is so long and full of bells. I just wanted to real quick make reference to that and make sure people understand why that's important. If you remember back to the first Danny chapter, the series tells us that his braid is so long because he's never lost a fight. When a Dothraki loses in combat, they have to cut off their braid, and Drogo's braid brushes the back of his thighs, so he's never lost a fight. And the bell part, during their, uh, when, when they're off by themselves, Danny helps him take his braid out and helps him take the bells out of his hair. Dothraki warriors add a bell to their hair after every victory. Interesting. So background information, we mentioned Dosh Kaleen. So the wife of Akal is known as a Khaleesi. So da- Daenerys will be known as a Khaleesi from this point forward. The Dosh Kaleen is a group of widowed Khaleesis. Um, they act as a guide and leadership group for the Dothraki. They are based in Vias Dothrak in the easternmost part of Essos. And they're believed to have prophetic powers, sort of like right. the oracles yeah. of the Dothraki. And we also met Drogo's blood riders. And they are guards and companions for the cows, uh, kind of like brothers. They're 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 very close, and they will not they don't outlive him. Uh, the oath between a blood rider and his cow is uh, considered deeper than that of a Westerosi king's guard. Okay, well, we've seen how easily that one can <laughs> yeah. be broken, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, come on now. So Drogo's three blood riders are Koholo, Quotho, and Hago. Not D'Artagnan? No. <laughs> if he gets a fourth one, I mean, that's what I would call it. Uh, so the Blood Riders, if the Carl dies in battle, the Blood Riders, Blood Riders only live long enough to avenge him, and they take the widowed Khaleesi to Dosh Kaleen and then join the Carl in death. Yeah. I, I feel like if I was offered that job, I'd have to give it some thought. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't take that oath as lightly as Jamie took the King's Guard oath. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Clearly, he's just yeah. like, sure, whatever. Yeah, Go and, with oh, the flow. And it was similarly, uh, Barristan Selmy, didn't we say that Barristan Selmy had been King's Guard to four kings? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blood Riders. <laughs> you got one job. <laughs> one, one shot at this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a little bit about the dragon eggs. Um, during the reign of King Viserys the I Targaryen, which is back uh, 250 years ago, it became customary to place a dragon's egg in the cradle of a newborn Targaryen. Yeah, very and then cool. it was considered a sign that the child was a true Targaryen if the egg then hatched. And if it didn't, it was a bad omen. The tradition of placing the egg in the cradle of the newborn royals continued even after the last dragon died and the eggs ceased to hatch at all. So um, that is, you know, there are connections between, you know, dragon eggs and Targaryens go back, have some history. Yeah, that's really neat. So comparison with the TV show, this is all generally captured, the fighting and the scenes at the wedding, uh, the various gift, including the horse for, Dan- for Danny from Khal Drogo, the fossilized dragon eggs from Mopatis, uh, and touchingly the books of the history of Westeros from Sejora. She definitely yeah, liked those. Yeah, she yeah. was a it seemed to be one of her favorites. Yeah. The conversation with Carl Drogo where he shows off his one word of oh. common tongue, which is no, no. <laughs> <laughs> multiple times. Uh, yeah. And they managed to get the sex scene. In they there. definitely got captured this sex scene. Yeah. Yes. So um, yeah, pretty much it's all there. We're still pretty close. Yeah. Stick yeah. with us on I, this uh, differences with the TV show. We're going to start to yeah, veer at some they'll, point. They'll diverge. Pedantry Corner, I think there's a, I've got a good one here. And, I mean, I'm not sure what my t- favorite type of pedantry is. I do love pedantry. <laughs> um, but anything that the, the editor should pick should have picked up on. Right. That was, remember, chapter one, we had one of those. And we were yes. like, that was the distance of the wall. And how many days they'd How many been. days they'd... Yeah. And, and the fact that Will was supposed to be on the wall. <laughs> he had had a shift that week that, on the yeah. wall. Clearly, that should have been picked up by the editor. And this is another example of that. Very first sentence of this chapter, there's contradiction. Well, sorry, the very first page. The first sentence suggests that the wedding has already happened. It says, Daenerys wed Khal Drogo with fear and barbaric splendor in a field, yada, yada, yada. But then later on on the same page, Jorah Mormont's first words are, best we get the princess wedded quickly. Yeah. Did he miss it? Was he so drunk? That... <laughs> <laughs> uh, she should get married, that one. <laughs> Too late. Already done. <laughs> The, so, yeah, that's interesting. May, maybe it goes to the Vice Dothrak thing. Maybe they have to, until all of this is done, they're not truly married. But 
You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, that could be. Or maybe Martin is bouncing back and forth. You know, maybe that first paragraph or is just to say this happened. Oh, I see. And now here Here's comes what? how it happened. Yeah, all right. Maybe. Yeah. I still think that's that's wrong. <laughs> Um, so earlier I mentioned Danny, how she took to that silver filly of hers. And I just found it interesting that she met, she thinks in her head she's not a very strong rider. Then she gets on this horse and takes off like a like an expert, <laughs> <laughs> turns around, comes flying back, and jumps a fire pit with a horse she's riding for the first time as an admittedly not very strong rider. That just seems like it would be, you know, I'm no riding expert. I've never been on a horse in my life, but that seems like a rather advanced move. You've never been on a horse? No. Interesting. Yeah. I, I have a couple of times, but only like with another person. Oh, yeah. Clinging on for dear life. I had no... <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I, I I agree with you on that, but 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 I did wonder if the, this horse is so special. You know, Maybe. Because yeah, I wondered that they, too. They say it's the pride of the Kalasar. Maybe... Yeah. It has the ability to be ridden by any idiot, you know. Right. <laughs> but I gotta say, I'm... I need that horse. Oh, I have been on a horse when I went to uh, Jackson, Wyoming. You rode a horse. Yes, it was not a friendly. It, the horse and I did not get along very well. <laughs> His name was Petey. Petey. Petey, and he was very. I wondered what, why, when I was, we were all getting on our horses. Every like ranch hand that I had to interact with was like, oh, you've got Petey. Well, and then would give me special instructions. And I was like, why is nobody else getting special instructions? They're not riding Petey. It was not exactly why. <laughs> so, <laughs> Petey did what Petey wanted to do. <laughs> so this was not that long ago. No, it was like And three... it was a significant part of your vacation. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> totally and, forgot. And you're the one with the good memory. <laughs> Just as a reminder here. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. Uh, so, um... No, news and notes. There's actually a little topical thing. There's, um, it's come out recently that Amelia Clark, who played Daenerys in the TV show, yep. w- felt pressurized into some of the, uh, the nude scenes in Game of Thrones. In particular, she signed the contract to be Daenerys, and then it was revealed to how much nudity there would Oof, be. So as a result of this, the, spot. Yeah, the British Institute of Film Directors has issued new guidelines to try to protect the mostly young, mostly, almost always female actors from exploitation by those with power over them. So I cool. think that's, yeah, I, I think that's got to be a good thing. I mean, sure. it's perfectly fine if Amelia, if they said to Amelia Clark, you're going to get naked here, here, and here. And here, and here, and, and here, and here. Sign the contract. Yeah. And then she can make the choice, you know. But right. make her sign the contract and then say, get your kit off. That seems a little, a little wrong. Sure. So, <laughs> don't <laughs> laugh. <laughs> The thing, <laughs> two episodes in a row, we have <laughs> something to talk about with Simon. <laughs> something to talk about with Simon and the vagaries of his mind. <laughs> this is my concern here. And previous episodes. And previous episodes. So, so the worst thing about this was when I listened back to this episode, I immediately spotted it, and I was like, "Oh, I hope nobody else notices that." Fourteen times eight. Is 112, not 120, as has been recorded and published for all posterity. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, again, my bachelor's degree was in mathematics. I was just about to ask what your <sighs> degree was in. <laughs> but I'm, I'm losing it. The the thing was, I think what I was doing, I don't know. I have no excuse really. But I was, I was kind of. Yeah, you aren't used to having to convert stones into <laughs> pounds uh, and figure that out. Uh, you just know it by the, the by the stone, uh, <laughs> right? I, Am I helping? <laughs> I'm going to say I was just approximating. Yeah, 114 times eight is 120. So 14 times eight is 120. But I just got it wrong. Sorry. It happens. Yeah. Did you dream it? <laughs> <laughs> I dreamed that I didn't get it wrong. <laughs> Nobody knows how bad my arithmetic has become. Uh, so in conclusion, Cal yeah. Drogo seems to be. Kind of sweet on Danny. He which does. Yeah. Is a little Did bit. Not see that coming. No, the whole thing seems to be built up to like this is going to be terrible, and then he yeah. was kind of nice. She had the mantra, "I'm the blood of the dragon. I'm the blood of the dragon." Turns out wasn't as terrible as she was expecting. Yeah, but the series, he's still a jag off. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, and if. Uh, She's not a good rider of horses. They've got a long horse ride ahead of them. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe this special horse will help uh, uh, yeah, ease yeah. that situation. Yeah. yeah, she's got a whole new lifestyle she's going to have to get yeah. used to. This barbaric 
Dothraki lifestyle, she seems rather traumatized by it right now. So. Yeah, yeah. There's no no house with a red door and a lemon tree no. in her near future, I feel. Um, so that's it for this week. I think I just wanted to sign off by saying um, thanks to all our listeners. We uh, we get to see a few stats about who's listening, and we've got listeners now in 13 countries. Yeah, which is very fantastic. Yeah, it really is very exciting. So, yeah. Um, so bonjour and guten tag and all that to <laughs> all of our international listeners. We are. It's great to have you. Uh, funnily, we don't have any listeners in the United Kingdom. I tell you what, uh, it's it's a little <laughs> bit hurtful. <laughs> Just a little bit hurtful. So if we get to 14 countries, then it'll probably be that one. Fingers um, crossed. But, but yes, thank you all so much, really. Yeah, it makes us doing this... Uh, I mean, it's fun to do it. Right. We, it, that's why we do it, is because we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. But it really means a lot to us. Yeah, that other people are having fun out of it as well. And hearing the positive feedback is always yeah. a, a nice uplifter. Yeah. Thanks a million. Yep. Uh, and as always, you can reach us at Ghost dot hall at gmail.com and you can go out and follow us on twitter at ghosts hall and don't forget we're now on facebook so go out there and find our facebook page it's the ghosts of heron hall okay. that's it all right until next time thanks bye bye hi all it's mckelly we've got outtakes so stick around for the end of the music and check them out And as always, our plan is to chat about the chapter without spoiling. And as always, wow. And as always, our plan is to, jeez, Louise. And as always, oh my God, <laughs> it's one word. And for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Let's get down to business with a quick recap of what John. Let's get down to business with a quick recap of what Daenerys was doing last time we saw her. All right. So. Okay. All it's, right. It's, it's Daenerys. <laughs> I don't know why. I was like, I always start with all right, so. I was trying to think of another way to lead in, but I couldn't think of anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought King Robert's procession to Winterfell was a big party. Hi, Penny the dog. Uh, we were hoping you would sit quietly. Is it because no. I started talking, you got excited, you heard my voice? That's the one you want to hear. You're not Rob. <laughs> Uh, I told you he was in the minority. Yeah. So we do get a bit of an idea of how barbaric the Dothraki might be. Uh, rape and murder are not just... She's going to cry this whole time. <laughs> are you crying about the rape and murder? <laughs> that's that's what it is. Poor thing. <laughs> You're so sweet. They make reference to no privacy in the Kalasar and that Illyrio refers to them mating like in like herd animals. <laughs> 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 Uh, our listeners have no idea our listeners have no idea why we're laughing this hard <laughs> this herd oh, man. our notes have um have a different word yes the notes the, the notes are supposed to say they mate like herd animals but it says they mate like hard animals which is possibly uh, also true but man. well uh, one Particularly interesting gift was the gown made of 1,000 mouth. 1,000 mouth. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs>